So guys, welcome to the video. You're about to see the most epic pancakes ever made. It's something that brings me back to the rock legendary cheat day times where I geniusly did this and made this concoction. So what we're gonna do is finish it off making delicious eggs and pancakes post leg workout. Actually post pull workout, what was I thinking? Just posted that video, feeling good, feeling tired. So let's get some pancakes on the frying pan, some eggs, some Reese's, check it out. Here we go, number one. Yes, y'all, coconut oil is essential, and this is about to be an absolutely glorious meal. The Reese's inside. Ooh. All right, two all eggs, a couple whites. It's epic. Any of you call this a cheat meal? It's probably 100 grams of carbs, maybe 30-ish grams of fat, 50 protein. I don't even know, maybe not. battery. I'm out. <clears throat> Peace. Keep eating, keep training. So good. That layer though. Dangerous. It's very important. <clears throat> It's important not to forget that the key to doing this right is doing it twice to get big. More egg yolks this time. A cup of oats, a cup of raisin bran, and then pinsel, dill. Um, oh, come on. Rosemary's good too. Uh, pretty much whatever the fuck you want. So I'm then struggling. put them in the oven. Elemental Chakra Yoga. I'm Brett Larkin. Come into a child's pose. Woo, Brett Larkin! Yeah! Brett Larkin. What's going on, everyone? I'm not going to leave you all hanging here on this uh, yoga introduction class, day one, but I think I'm going to follow it up by day two, three, and so on, because I felt amazing during my training today. So this was an 18, 19 minute session by Brett Larkin. Check it out after class. This is uh, I'm dying. Yam, our fire breath. Last five. Damn it, Brett. Three, two, one. Great job. Lower the hips to the ground. And your uh, hips, I suppose, once again, just opening the heart. We connect with that air. So, Brett Larkin is someone I found on YouTube completely randomly years ago. And I did a few of her videos when I needed it. And other than that, I just kind of let it go because I was doing so much physical therapy and stuff like that. But like I was saying in this video, or like I say in this video, I feel like a prisoner in my body when I try to like reach behind me or sit down on the ground or anything. So this is something I'm gonna start doing and it's just a good habit that I'm gonna be disciplined with versus uh, some lesser habits maybe. So I'm looking forward to it and I'll feel a lot better after I have a feeling. So good luck guys, join me, peace. Nasty, nasty day in Denver today, but we started off on the right foot. This book's gonna be a big part of my life over the next couple weeks. But most interestingly, after doing physical therapy all year uh, for my knee and for my shoulder, I've neglected any type of just regular stretching routines, and for me, it's my hips. My hips are always the worst thing on me. I can't sit cross-legged, and it was pretty good after stretching when I was driving lift last year. I got flexible. But that's all gone now so just doing that like 18 minute morning yoga chakra thing to sit seated and then try to hold my hands over my head it feels kind of like uh just feels like i slept in the fetal position for like a week straight open up it just doesn't work i can you know utilize my body standing up and position myself to get under the barbell on a press but when i'm seated i don't have any way to navigate my body and it feels terrible when i'm on the ground like on my butt 
sitting, uh, I feel like a prisoner in my own body, 100%, 100, 100%. If you ask me to sit cross-legged and watch something or eat on the ground or something like that, if it's not in a squat form, it's uncomfortable. As I go through reading starting strength and as I have the fortunate position to be like 95% healthy as far as my shoulder goes, the knees coming along as well, uh, I don't want to have super, super tight hips and hurt myself. So yoga every day, I guess. I don't even know that that's like, is that like a thing that I should try? Five days a week? I don't know, but I should have discipline and do it just like I did with everything else because it always works out in the end. So that's an intro to the video. Maybe after all that, I'll train legs today. But I deadlifted yesterday. Hmm. Still train legs. You got quads and calves, brah. We're here at the leg video. Sorry to disappoint you, I don't have one of my colored beanies on, but um, I'm surprised I haven't gotten any questions or trolls about that. Either way, this is the warm up I do after seven and a half minutes on the bike. I do 30 reps of pushing the, knee, the towel down, 20 reps of pushing the band down and back, and 12 reps of these side leg kicks, and three rounds of that, so 30 reps down, 20 reps on the band, 12 reps on the whatever you're pushing up against, three rounds of that after a hard seven, eight minute bike warm up, and your legs and your glutes and everything's excellent. So I'm just gonna show you the top sets. We deadlifted yesterday, Scott and I. My lower back is definitely taxed from it. I know it's embarrassing to say, but it is what it is. I don't know if it was from the overhead press, I don't know if it was from the seated row. I don't know if it was from the deadlifts, but knowing my body, I know it was from the deadlifts. So definitely have to incorporate those safely and intelligently. Shouldn't just go to new gyms and deadlift with random, not random friends, but deadlift with friends. Those days are long gone until I can get, uh, I don't know, just my basic programming back under my belt here, but everything feels good with the more peculiar, unique stuff. So the video is not gonna be too long of working out, just a few more minutes, about five, and then I'll do some Q and A soon, maybe at the end of this video, maybe in the next video, but I'll go ahead and just give you guys a little bit of an idea of how hard I'm working here. So that was 26 pounds. I did two top sets like that, very hard for me and then here is it's awkward looking but it's 25 pounds so this is in each hand so this is 50 pounds total and again a set of eight and i did two sets so i've been working on my right knee my right quad just learning learning how to use it again by itself compound movements are great because your body learns how to work as a whole unit which is ideal but what happens if you hurt a body part and you have no skill with anything other than compound full body movements. If you lose a leg or your ability to use your leg, do you just immediately stop doing all things because you can only do compounds? It's really something to think about and I was so dogmatic and so stuck in my ways about compounds with the fear that I'd be small forever and it doesn't really change, it just makes me healthier at least. All right, so that's two top sets, or it's gonna be two top sets, stiff leg deadlift with I forget what, 18 pounds? Keeping that light today because of deadlifts, but still hitting 25 pounds per hand on average on these split squats. So having said that, catch my breath and do this one more time. Two top sets of each and then more quads, calves, little hands. Normally you know that after that I would go into the glute ham raise or the back extension, whatever it is. But because my lower back is tired and I did deadlift yesterday, we just called it there with the um, introduction movements and didn't do any uh, glute ham raise. So the single leg deadlift really stretched my hamstring out after training it yesterday. Obviously the split squats got my quads excellent. And this just got my hamstrings. I used 30 pounds only for my working weights as opposed to 35 or 40. Now I was able to just grind a couple of nasty, nasty, <clears throat> excuse me, I was able to grind a couple nasty sets out. So really happy with how the hamstring curl went. Left my ego at the door on this one. And yeah, that's really what you should do with your curls and extensions, guys. It's really not about the weight. It's about recruiting your muscles during the right part of the range of motion, the whole range of motion, having the right tempo, speed, control. Those things are always relevant unless you're doing a one rep max. So when you're training, when you're rehabbing, when you're learning new movements, it's very good to take your time and just ignore everyone's advice. The way I'm doing leg extensions here, I keep this whole set in. You all can clearly see, this is just how I do it. I keep my feet inward, I keep my legs rotated inward, and I push my knees together. 
as I'm extending. So if you think about like if you're gonna do like a roundhouse kick, is that a real thing? Like a side kick to a bag. When you go to kick, you don't necessarily lock out really hard straight unless you're doing the straight kick. When you turn over, you finish like this with internal rotation. So next time you do the leg extension, I want you to feel like you're kicking a bag with the top of your foot on the side of the bag. And when you finish that to kick, that's what the top of the movement should be like. It shouldn't be like a feet out, like 90% finish. You should be able to finish through like it was a swing, like it was a kick. Your knees shouldn't just get almost locked. You should be able to roll and finish. And I've never heard anyone talk about that. Like it's a kicking movement, but it really has allowed me to feel it better. So give it a try if you're having problems with the leg extension, definitely. It was alright, it was alright. It was hard. That's gonna wrap it up for the workout. Thank you for enjoying it with me. I did finishing uh, movements for calves and anterior tibialis. Didn't film the tibialis because this dude right here was kind of like totally in the way. It was like a calf day at the gym today and it's funny because I was telling my friend how psyched I was to train legs on Monday and most of the gym was training legs. I went at two so it was like very, very not packed but I did have to uh, kind of wait around for the calves which is all good so I'm really happy with how the workout went I'm happy that I can deadlift one day and then train legs the next it's like crazy to me my knee is doing okay I definitely had some soreness but I was able to basically match my PRs mostly right after doing a back day with deadlift so that is a major improvement if y'all know what I mean peace that's a wrap that was an awesome awesome workout we deadlifted yesterday my lower back and my posterior chain are definitely achy so the stiff legs were light and everything else was pretty heavy. Quads were heavy, leg extensions were brutal. So I'm so excited to maintain my, some of my lifts and keep getting the quads up. Honestly, it's just a good feeling. I haven't felt that good in a long time. So two days in a row, getting leg exercises is awesome for me. So I'm gonna rest big. So hopefully tomorrow we can bench. Three days in a row, crazy. Rest for sure, eat, rest, eat, rest.